to get your Bible ready, uh, you refer to some scripture. And uh, okay, you can stop me anytime you want. If you, you have questions. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, we will move from there, see how the Holy Spirit leads. Okay, uh, we are here to talk about leaders, leaders and leadership, right? Uh, so we are in a church setting. Uh, church setting leadership uh, is very wide, uh, but we are in the church. So this is a spiritual leadership we are talking about. There are two different type of leaders. One is secular leadership. Uh, secular leadership doesn't exercise spiritual authority. Yeah? They doesn't understand what is spiritual authority. Um, and, and it's very, very different. Uh, yeah, uh, we are talking about spiritual leadership. Spiritual leadership, you have to uh, follow spiritual principles. Right? So in the world, people rule by power, uh, rule by force. You can use machine gun and <laughs> use missile to command authority. But in spiritual leadership, no. Jesus said, I come to serve and not to be served. Uh, and uh, this is it's so different. Yeah? So Jesus doesn't come and conquer the world by machine gun. He doesn't come to the world and lead a troop of army to, to try to win the world. You know? he, Jesus come to die in sit and show the world uh, life for lives. You know? uh, because of one man's sin, then... Uh, one man have to wash all our sins. So he come to die so that we can have life. So you can see spiritual leadership is totally different from secular leadership. So, so the, the principle is different. Okay, uh, I want to ask, uh, I'd like to know from all of you, since we have only small group of us, uh, tell me well, what, why uh, I'm sure all of us here, uh, you know this is a leadership seminar, right? That's why you are here. Okay. So you, you may uh, envision yourself to be a leader, right? Or you already a leader uh, in some, some point or, or some sense or another. Huh? So uh, I would like to ask why, what is the reason you want to be a leader? Uh, Think about it. What, what is the actual reason you want to be a leader? I give you one minute to think, then you can start answering me one by one. Huh? <laughs> After that. Of course, uh, we are talking about spiritual leadership. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you, you aspire to be a leader, or you are really a leader, or in the future you, you want to be a greater leader. What, what is the uh, uh, drive that what, what is the ambition or what, what's the reason behind that push you you want to be a leader that's my question what's the reason uh, the reason behind because that that is very important that that is your 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 motive or uh, your the drive behind you that will make you want to do it And anyone want to answer? Raymond, you have you thought about it? I want to stand up for Okay, sure. Right, sure.
Okay. At that time, you, you, you saw a need, right? You saw the people, the young people, that need a psycho, psycho, huh? <laughs> uh, somebody to be an example. Uh, they need help. So you see a need, yeah, yeah, you can see that uh, you want to help them. So that, that drives you to be a better leader. Huh? Yeah. Mm. It, did anybody really follow you at the time? They really listen to you? They follow you means they, they listen to your advice, they, they really look up to you? Okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, a very easy definition for leaders. Huh? Uh, in, in fact, you, you may want, want to find out what is leader. A leader must have follower. La. If you are not having any follower, you are. Uh, John Maxwell is a very famous uh, leadership guru. La. He said, if you don't have a follower, you're just taking a walk. You're not a leader. You're just taking a walk. A leader will have followers. Okay, why, why they follow you? There must be something in you they look up to. So, so this, these are the things that uh, we, want to, we want to look into. What makes a good leader? What people are looking up to you? Huh? Because mainly, uh, I, I can see that mainly because you have set a good example. All right? So, uh, okay. A anyone else want to, want to say anything? <laughs> Should I use the mic? Oh, oh recording. Okay, all right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I did I say? <laughs> uh, oh, your asked to yeah, to be better than than him because Jesus also said, "You shall do greater things, greater things than me." Uh, Jesus already very good. But he assured us we can do greater things than him, right? By the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. Mm. Okay, uh, but uh, leaders are not easy to, to be and to develop. Huh? It's not easy. It takes a lot of, a lot of uh, efforts and a lot of time. You will see uh, a, a good leader, effective leaders, it takes years. It takes years and years to develop a good leader. Uh, and the Bible says in James 3.1, uh, there is a stricter judgment on teachers, on leaders. Huh? So do not think that uh, leaders are very, very high up there and very, very enjoyable. Uh, leaders, because have to set good example, there are stricter judgment. Uh, James 3 1, you can, you can look into it. Yeah. Uh, so they have to live a life above reproach. You know what's above reproach? That means the common community standard is here. He has to live above that so that the line will be here. He, 
he, nobody can blame him for, for that. His reputation has to be that high. Then he deserves to be called the leader. Even there are people accuse him for something which people suspect him doing wrong, but because of his record, his history record that already set a very good example. So people will tend to believe him than believe the rest because his reputation, he lived above reproach. For example, uh, I have a good friend named uh, Pastor Mervyn Lim. I'm sure he came here before to preach. Huh? So if you, you tell me, uh, if you come and say, uh, hey, Pastor Lim, uh, he, he cheat someone, you know, he, he borrow somebody's money, uh, he never return. I will, I will not immediately listen to, to this kind of accusation because I know him for more than 10 years. I know what kind of person he is because he never do such thing. So that, that's why a leader has lived his life above reproach means he not easily, his testimony is not easily give away to accusation like that. You know, unless there are a lot of proof, lah, huh? a lot of proof that, that proof that he has changed. Huh? For me, for now, I have never seen him have done such thing. Lah, huh? So that is the leader's reputation, is above everything. Huh? So in order to be a leader, uh, you will see from the Bible again and again, a good character will build uh, that leader to a position that people can trust and willing to uh, follow him, all right? Okay, uh, let's go on. Eh? Okay, leaders are not made overnight. Okay, as I said just now, uh, it's not mass produced. It's not like industrialized or kilang, you know, uh, photostat, <laughs> copy and paste. Uh, by and large, we human beings, I find that we like to copy and paste things. <laughs> Even when I'm in Bible school, my, my classmate uh, do homework, we, we like to copy other people's things and just cut and paste, become our things. Uh, that is, without quoting that person as footnote, it's actually wrong, huh? it's, not, it's not correct. Because when we, we write thesis, we write uh, our paper, we have to come up with something solid that after thoughts, after study, after re reference, then uh, copy and paste become like uh, you're making actually just photo step. Lah. No. Because every leader, every human being, God say you are wonderfully and uniquely made by God. Am I right? We are all different. You look at yourself, even twins are different. I have, I have uh, twins uh, classmate last time in uh, primary school. They all really, really look alike, but after knowing them, the two are so different in character, even though they look alike, right? So you see, God's uh, making leaders is as well. We all different in some way. No one is same. God is so uh, unique. Huh? Uh, highly profile, yeah. Highly profile is the trend of today's leadership. Uh, even a, a person that, that not so qualified can be highly profiled, become so, uh, look so good, and uh, uh, even graduation paper can be bought, you know. It seems that he has PhD, he has a lot of knowledge, but yet come to groundwork, can he do the work? Only times will tell, all right? Only times will tell whether he is really a leader at the end of the day, give him a year, whether he can do the job, whether people can follow him, his testimony is tested, then you will know, right? So, uh, it seems perfect outside, outward appearance, but rotten inside. There are people like that, huh? uh, a lot of hidden, uh, hidden uh, rubbish, or hidden uh, sin, uh, that only he and God knows that uh, he, especially in the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, that's why I would say that uh, spiritual leadership is not so much on the gifts or ability of a person. 
uh, yes, God still used uh, gifted leaders uh, in His grace and mercy. God used gifted uh, pastors or even leaders in the church. But God uh, looked even above that. Um, it, it's the inside. It's the inside character, inside purity and integrity that, uh, that, that will last for a century, even he passed away. Then, then his name is, is remain. You know? Because uh, the Bible says, whatever you do in the, in the hidden will be one day it's exposed, will be exposed. You know? So, especially spiritual leadership, I would say is that our lives uh, will speak very loudly than more than what we preach. Our lives, you know? what, what we, our lives, you know? yeah, our, our family, uh, yeah, daily life, you know. Uh, uh, we sit down for a cup of coffee, you know, free talks. Uh, that, that is the real person of that pers uh, the person that your leader is. Uh, I, I will not able to know you unless I sit down and over a cup of coffee and talk with you, right? A preacher can preach so well on the pulpit, he can even exercise spiritual authority and perform signs and miracles, but the uh, life behind you will not know. Only God knows and He knows. So, but whatever say and done, uh, we have to accountable to God uh, as the leader, right? We have to accountable to God. So at the end, uh, our life will speak louder, right? So that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you still remember in the in First uh, Samuel sixteen, uh, God asked Prophet Samuel to go to uh, choose the second king for Israel after King Saul being rejected by the people. In fact, King Saul is a very, very handsome and tall, tall, physically very, very uh, uh, stout and very, very handsome. The Bible, in, uh, in fact, describes Saul as a person taller than any normal man, one, one head above, huh? one head above. He's that, that built, that kind of built. But yet, uh, this is the standard of that kind, uh, that time, People look up to leaders that you know, our appearance, you must be uh, very military built. But uh, the story in uh, God chose the second king after uh, first king being rejected. Uh, the, the, you still remember how, how God asked uh, Samuel to choose uh, from the family of Jesse? Do you remember? You do remember? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to First Samuel 16. It's a very interesting uh, story. At that time, uh, now the Lord... Uh, uh, verse 1 say now the Lord say to Samuel now how long will you mourn for Saul so that means uh, Samuel was very sad that Saul is already rejected by God for uh, his disobedience uh, towards God eh? and uh, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel fill your horn with oil and go I am sending you to JC the uh, badly ham Mike, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Samuel hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a helper with you and say, I have come to sacrifice the Lord. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I cut the story short. So God asked Samuel to fill up the horn with oil to anoint the new king. So he came to the family of Jesse, which God told him so uh, JC had many sons so being normal human being that uh, that that Samuel thought the the first 
eldest son or the second son or the third son should be the next king because they, they look the, the more outwardly, they look uh, more like a, a, a military because the king have to be the military leader. They, have, they must know how to fight. Right? Those days, king have to be a, a, a soldier. Right? So the first one who came out, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, verse 6. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab. Eliab is his elder son and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. So he, Samuel thought Eliab is the, is the one. So take note of verse 7. Uh, very important. Verse 7, take note of. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the, at the heart. Nah? <laughs> yeah. So after that, followed by Abinadab, uh, also very, very handsome and very well built, uh, verse 8. Uh, then the Lord said, It's not him. Then another one, Shamal, passed by and the Lord say, neither has this one God has chosen. So Jesse all together make seven of his son. So all seven, neither has the Lord chosen all this. So he, he, he forgotten, Jesse forgotten, he got another insignificant son who take care of sheep, a, a, a shepherd boy who take care of sheep at, ah, at the backyard there. So he didn't even think of that young son can be the next king. He never thought. Amazing, right? Things that we thought is become real. <laughs> that shepherd boy probably too young, too young to be a king. I, I, I guess now nah, what Jesse is thinking now. Nah, Mana boleh ini budak kecil ini ya? jaga kambing saja macam mana menjadi raja? <laughs> you never thought probably that time you can guess only 16 years old the boy David at that time. I guess ah uh, around 16 17. How can be? If I were Jesse, I would never thought that he may be the next king. That's why Samuel asked Jesse, you all these are your son. That's all. No more. Oh, yeah, 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 ada satu lagi. <laughs> satu lagi, tapi itu tak mungkin lah, saya ingat. Itu jaga kambing saja, boleh. Mana jadi, jadi uh, ambil pisau, pergi perang, mana boleh. <laughs> Dulu mana ada mesin kan, tak ada kan. Pakai barang saja. <laughs> so, you see, God, God look at things differently. We, we thought the most talented people must be the leader. We thought the most uh, study, study very good, you know, have all the, all the paperwork, uh, uh, a good student, graduate from famous university, you know, all this must be the cream of the crops, they must be the leader. Not necessary, really not necessary. You look at me, I, 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 I'm, not a <laughs> I'm not a very good student, you know. My, my teacher has scolded me, uh, said, Hey, he called me Chong Kek Kiong, uh, that's my full name. Uh, hey, ini English, setengah mati, ini bahasa Malaysia pun setengah tong saja. Mana cukup? Macam mana you mau SPM mana pass? He scolded me like that, uh, my, my class teacher, when I'm taking my SPM. It's true, uh, I fail. <laughs> I fail my English, I fail my. Uh, oh, I didn't fail. Uh, his, in class, I feel I merely just pass. Mary just pass. I did very badly in my study. I did very badly. But God have mercy on me, lah. Huh? <laughs> God have mercy on me. Huh? Today I can use English to speak. Huh? Uh, you can understand, right? <laughs> uh, so thank God, lah. Huh? I thank God. Uh, God saved me, and through His grace, He taught me a lot of things. Huh? He taught me a lot of things that I never learned in school. A lot of things. So, 
So it's like that. God look at our hearts, look at inside of us, which uh, a lot of people didn't see. Okay, all right, so let's go on. Let's see the next one. Okay, then what is leader? So leaders are specially, uniquely, specially formed and uniquely designed. Design. You know, let's take photo. I can give you my thumb drive. You can just copy to your phone. Or, huh? <laughs> yeah. An engineer predestined before time. God said, I knew you be even before you was formed in your mother's womb. Correct or not? God lived beyond time. He is not like human being like you and me. We live in time and limited by time. God lived beyond time. Huh? So God knows, already knows before it happened. He knows that actually you will be the leader. We have to find out slowly from time to time how I can be that leader that you call me to be. Right? So we are actually carefully selected to be developed, tested. Every one of us need to be tested. Huh? Tested through time and circumstances. Right? God used circumstances right? to, to mold us. Oh. After he or she is willing to surrender, the key word is surrender. Many of us... Uh, even though uh, there are examples in the Bible uh, that even though they are chosen, but they're, they're not willing to surrender, then they didn't reach the destiny that God ordained for them. So the, the word is surrender. Surrender under His uh, leadership, right? God's leadership and God's uh, guidance. Huh? Into the Master's hand and to be renewed in the spirit of one's mind. Our mind needs to be renewed because we have so many years of uh, influence of the world, okay, our mind, our spirit need to be renewed and be transformed into His image and likeness. This is my definition. I didn't copy or paste from anyone else. This is my own definition. All right? You can come up with your own. The scripture below, that's where I, I take, take it from. It's biblical. So this is my, uh, how, where I come from. Uh. So, in order to make a leader, we, we go through all this. We go through circumstances. We are tested by time. So all this, you, okay? Right. Uh, okay, let's go on. You want the, the slide I can give you, no problem. You don't need to copy. So, oh, very hardworking. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Wow, so hardworking. Huh? So I, I talk also so semangat a bit. Huh? Oy, thank you so much for the encouragement. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to jot down. Yeah, good that. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Philippians two, verse twelve to thirteen, it says, "Work out your salvation." It's a very interesting Bible verse, huh? Let's read the whole Bible verse, Philippians 2, verse 12 to 13. Okay, I may not able to finish everything I prepared, but I think uh, I will give the second half of the meeting for questions better. Uh, then we'll tackle your questions. All right, I may finish in about probably 20, 20 minutes time. Then we'll open up for questions. All right. Okay. Uh, Anyone have found it? Uh, Raymond, you found it, then you can help me to read it out slowly, read clearly and slowly so that everyone can, can hear it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, this Bible verse, you need some time to think about it, ponder about it. 
then you can get more from it. Uh, I, what, what do you mean by work out your salvation? And I, 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 am I saved already? Why I still need to work out? Have, have you ever asked that? When you would read this verse? Yes, you are safe. But there is a very important principle in the salvation or in the, in the theology of uh, uh, not yet and already. Eh? This is a, uh, I, I'm teaching you some, something I learned from Bible school. You only learn this in Bible school. I don't think so any preacher in church talk about this. Eh? This principle is, is practiced uh, and you, if you can understand it, you will be helpful, very, very helpful for your spiritual understanding in spiritual life. Uh, there are a principle called not yet and already. All right. Am I safe? Yes, I am safe. I am saved by the grace of God. And at the same time, not yet, because I haven't finished my life. Ma. Yes, I'm safe in spiritual sense by confessing my sins and realize that my faith in Christ Jesus and I'm safe. Right? By the grace of God, by faith, we are justified. Am I right? That is what Romans told us. Not yet, because we haven't gone to heaven yet. We haven't finished our walk with God. Am I right? We are still living through our life in this world until the day we breathe our last breath. Then we meet our maker. Right? Am I, am I making sense? Okay. Okay. Oh, very good. You can easily understand. Huh? It made me three years to understand this in Bible school, you know. <laughs> You are clever, huh? Are you sure? Simple English, huh? Okay. You're a good student, huh? Very fast, huh, you learn. Uh, so scared that you don't understand, huh? I have to say again. Hey! <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, okay. Right. I try to make it easy to understand. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Tatika lah. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Wonderful. I like this class. <laughs> It takes a lot of uh, time for me to understand certain things. Huh? Like this was the first time I read probably when I'm 14 years old, 13 years old. I don't understand anything. I don't understand anything. But my, I, I have a very good leader as well. Huh? He tried to explain to me this words. Work out your salvation. That means we are not, not there yet. Am I right? Or else God won't ask us to work, work out our salvation. Yes, the part that God has done, God already done on the cross by sending His Son Jesus to die for us, providing the grace, the forgiveness on the cross down here. Yet, yet we have to work through their process towards glorification. Huh? At the end of the day, God come, Jesus come and take us to the air to meet Him, right? That is glorification and glorify. We are glorified. All right? So from here today to that point, we have to go through <laughs> a lot of tests. Oh. Every day is a test of our faith. Oh. Temptation. Am I right? We have to walk through this life through tests. And our faith needs to be tested by trusting Him to provide, provide everything for us, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, socially, until the day we meet our maker. 
this faith at the end will be justified. All right? God said, your faith passed the test. So you are justified by, we are justified by our faith. Man. Correct? Because we don't give up our faith. We trust in Him. No matter what happened, no matter what test had come our way. So, sanctification, we need to be sanctified. Am I right? All these are the process of work out our salvation to, towards our salvation. Huh? Justify, justification, sanctification. What's the meaning of sanctification? That means we need to be cleansed, right? We are still a lot of bad luck. We are still have a lot of craving towards certain area, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of men. These are the three major tests that uh, temptation that Jesus have overcome and John have warned all of us in the book of First John. You go and read. Huh? These are the things that, uh, that, that, that will come our ways. Huh? So many people have fall, even though they are great men of God who are gifted, very talented, sad to say they didn't pass this test. Right? They're still not willing to surrender like just now. Leaders need to surrender, really have to surrender to God. At the end, he realized the final leader actually is the Holy Spirit, God. He also a follower. I am also a follower. By following God, I'm leading you to God, actually. I'm not leading you to me. No point leading you to me for what? Then at the end, you worship me. I become the devil. <laughs> That's how Lucifer became devil, am I right? He, he asked the people, in, in fact, he's supposed to lead people to worship God. He, his job is actually that. But he had wrong idea. Uh, he, he, he saw God, wow, so glamorous. He saw so so glorious, so, so nice to be worshipped. So he want to be God. At that point, he had this thought. He forgot God knows, all, God is all-knowing. Uh, he forgot about that part. <laughs> so God already knows what is going to happen. In fact, I'm sure God has given him opportunity to turn back. But he, he fulfills uh, at the end. He takes one third of the heavenly soldiers and then he, he came down become his followers. Uh. All right, so that's how uh, he miss up. He miss up all the things, the pride, want to become God. So that is a, that is a thing. So we have to overcome all this. You know, sanctification, justification, at the end, we reach glorification, with, which God gave us uh, the glory with him. But we have to work out our salvations. Right? Any questions? If not, then we continue. It's okay? Okay? So, uh, next words is the, the second point it's talking about the period of preparations. That's, uh, that's the reason why I say leaders are made over time, over a long period of time testing, right? Uh, to make a ready leader. That means that that leader is in God's eyes, huh? in God's eye, he is ready to, to do the work I ask him to do, right? So in our eyes, we thought, we may thought that he is ready, but in God's eyes, he may not be ready. All right, so uh, let's look at one of them, Moses. All of us know Moses. Moses, his life break into three, uh, three sections. The first section of his life, 40 years, he is actually under the University of Egypt. He learned all the knowledge and uh, and uh, all the expertise and wisdom from the University of Egypt. At that time, Egypt is the uh, most civilized and advanced uh, country. So he learned that, uh, learned all this. 
But yet, he's not ready yet. <laughs> he's not ready to be a leader. Why? Because he doesn't understand the, the heart of God. You remember that uh, he only, um, he, I would say that he only have uh, a heart for his people, that's all. But he doesn't have the heart of God. Uh, he doesn't know what God wants. And he doesn't know God that well that he, he, can, uh, he can practically carry out God's plan. You understand? So Moses at that time had all the knowledge of the world. But unfortunately, he doesn't have the wisdom of God to do what God wants him to do. Because he he been called by God to deliver his own people. It's a great job. That time, probably uh, Israel, the whole community of Israel probably easily come to 3 million people. 3 million. You have to lead 3 million people out of Egypt. Imagine 3 million people. I want person to control a class of 12 person in my, in my school also difficult. <laughs> Some of them will challenge me. Hey, you know, you know what you're talking about or not? Uh, Pastor Ezekiel. It's not like that, you know. Better check properly. <laughs> they will challenge you. Secondary student, uh, I'm teaching. I have students come up to my face, want to punch me also. Almost, uh, almost, uh, almost punch me. Because I take his handphone away. <laughs> oh, went through, huh? Yeah. Oh, you see? Moses have to lead 3 million people. So he have to be very, very patient with these people. If I know patient, uh, that guy already bitten by me already. That, that student who want to punch me. I easily can pin him down and finish him off. <laughs> He's a very fat. He can he sit on me, I cannot get up already. <laughs> very fat, fat guy, you know. He banged the table. Pow! I have to quickly call Pastor Lim and come. It's, it's a homeschool, homeschool center. Mm. It's not easy to be leader, right? You have to be very patient. See, Moses, the Bible says, uh, he is the meekest person. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, I think. He said, in that time, the, world, the meekest person in the world is Moses. Let us go to that, if you have the Bible. Numbers 12, 3, if I'm not mistaken. Huh? Let's look at it. Depending on the version you use, uh, Numbers 12, 12, verse 3. Okay, the New King James used the word humble. New Living Translation and American uh, standard American translation use the word meek. Meek, the meaning of meek, you know what's the meaning of meek? Have to do with gentleness, right? Meek actually literally means strength in control. Interesting, huh? Doesn't mean he's weak, you know. He has strength, but he is well controlled of the strength that he has. That is called meekness. It's a very unique uh, uh, character of Moses. At the time God said, so that uh, verse 3 said, now the man Moses was very humble, in other words, translate as it was very meek, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. He need to be so patient, gentle, with three million people in order to lead them out of Egypt. But 40 years, not enough to prepare him. Because after that 40 years, 
Okay, he made a mistake. You remember he killed an Egyptian because the Egyptian had fight with an Israelite, right? <laughs> he killed. That time he doesn't have that, that gentleness. He doesn't have that meekness. He just have a lot of hot blood inside. He just feel this is not right. I must come and <laughs> become the, uh, the, the judge. So he go and kill the person. <laughs> At the end, he had to run, run away, what? correct? He going to hide behind the wilderness. That's how he become a shepherd boy. Again, another shepherd boy. He become shepherd boy for another 40 years, you know, before he is ready to be the leader for his own people. The 40 years learning to take care of sheep uh, by himself, I think God have a purpose to train him up to be a better leader. So 40 plus 40 years, 80 years, my goodness, God prepared a leader. A great leader need that much of time. And let, let's look at Joseph. You all, you all know who is Joseph, like? Right? He's a very famous uh, second man to Pharaoh at that time. He's prime minister. Uh, just one man below his second man to the country. Eh? How he, he was a very gifted person. Interpret dreams. He know the dreams. He know how to have the spiritual dreams that God gave him. Even can uh, see many, many years be, 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 below the, uh, beyond the time. Can see the time that he become a prime minister. His father, mother, his, his brothers all bow down to him. Remember? That, that dream of the sun and moon, the stars. Yeah. So, gifted, very gifted, but not ready yet. He likes to just tell whatever he knows, he just tell. You know? He's not supposed to tell, actually. Not time yet. What? Right? Until his brother so jealous of him. Because father favored him. Favored child. <laughs> so, give him a color code. You know? <laughs> Remember? Then his brother so jealous, want to kill him. Remember? Thank God got one brother that uh, still had compassion, say, you shouldn't kill our brother. Then at the end, they throw him into a, a den. Then later, they sell him to slave trader, right? So the slave trader brought him to Egypt. That's how the story is, Joseph. But by the, by the time when he's ready to become a leader, probably about 15 to 20 years, uh, approximately. David, from the time he anointed in 1 Samuel 16 to the time that he really became the king of Absalom, uh, Ab Ab 20 years, around there, 20 years. Yours truly me, I accept Christ at the year 1983, okay, when I was 13 years old. <laughs> Now this year, I'm 52. So how many years already? 39 years. God made through different circumstances to different trials. I'm still in the making of a better leader. Yeah. All of us, yes. Need time. We really need time to develop a good leader, all right? Okay? Uh, when I first time stepped into the land of China, inland China, uh, it's 2017. 2017. When I reached uh, a small little village church in the province of Shantong, and I came to this church about this size, uh, it's a very, very cold winter, winter morning, very, very cold outside. In the year uh, 2017, December. So, that is my first message 
I, I, I came to this, uh, this uh, village. Uh. But I received the mission or the vision from God to, to be a missionary to China when I was very young. I, I was uh, probably about 15, 16 years old. At that time, I read a lot about the uh, China Revival, uh, Asian Outreach magazines. So I read a lot about the China, what happened in China. God put that burden in my heart for so-called my own people. Uh, so, so that time, when I was just about 15 years old, that, that fire already burning. But God takes so long, you know, until 2017, only say you are ready to go. You see, that, that long, that long. It's very, very long to prepare a leader. So don't, don't, don't rush into something that uh, you think that is, is already ready, right? So God needs time to prepare you. So when you are ready, God will really let you know. God will really let you know and you have the, you have the assurance in your heart to go into it. Huh? So that time, God will go with you. Because if you go by yourself, you are doing something that, yeah, you are not doing with God. You are doing something by yourself. You may, you may meet a lot of uh, disaster. Huh? You may come to a uh, wrong decisions. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go on. Okay, uh, this is uh, something that I learned. A good leader begins his ministry by being a good follower. Right? That is a usual uh, pattern that I see in the Bible. A good follower and also a good disciple. Huh? So example like Elisha and Elijah. You know the story? How Elisha followed Elijah. Then the moment that Elijah... I, I like Elijah... The most, I would say, in the Old Testament. He's my favorite prophet. <laughs> very human, very cartoon, very real. He can get angry, oh man, wow, very high spirit. <laughs> Another moment, he... Huh? Yeah, very transparent, very real, you know. Very, very cartoon one, he. And at one moment, he, he would feel like dying, he lost hope, he would sit under the broom tree there, want to cry, want to kill himself. <laughs> so... <laughs> He lost hope. Uh, that's why he, he feel like giving up. Uh, uh, so he want to... Then God visit him. And, and in the Bible, there's two persons, if not three, uh, that didn't die. They're being taken up by God to, to, to meet him. Uh, the first one is uh, Enoch. Enoch, God say just like that. He just disappeared. God take him away. I don't know how. Maybe he eat dinner with his family. Suddenly, his son saw him. Hey, Father, where are you going? Hey, you go up already. I don't know. Just my imagination. Now. I don't know. I don't know. You, you just imagine. The Bible didn't say anything. Uh, that, that another one is Elijah. Elijah taken up by God using chariot of fire. My goodness, that is what a way to die, man. What a way to die. I wish I died like that one day. <laughs> Whoa, one day, uh, I say. Some more, uh, God tell him, and he all, because at the time, Elijah have a school of prophets, uh, just like a, a college like that. They all learn to be prophets. Uh, all these are uh, students. Uh. Eli Elijah was one of the students. But Elijah, very smart. Elijah follow wherever he go. That means he, he really want to receive the anointing of a prophet. He really all out to become a better prophet. So he follow wherever he goes. He don't want to miss the chance to receive that uh, uh, anointing and uh, that, that mentor from him. So, so even his classmates uh, keep on telling him, hey, Eli Eli Elisha, do you know that today, uh, today, uh, God going to take your master away. You go and read, uh, go and read the Bible. Many times, I think at least two to three times. So he said, I know. That's why he keep on following him. 
keep on following wherever he goes until the day he saw his master being taken up by the chariot of fire. So he's a good follower. All right? a, a typical example of good follower. At the end, he, he, received, he received the double portions of his anointing. He do a double miracles, uh, double miracles. So Joshua and Moses, yeah. At the end, actually, who led the Israelite into the promised land? It's not Moses. It's Joshua. See, a better, a better leader have developed. Moses miss it. <laughs> miss it. He give in to his flesh desire. He tapli tahan already. So many people have have aggravated his anger. At the end, he cannot tahan his anger. He hit the rock. God asked him to speak to the rock ma, so that the water will come out, right? But he cannot tahan. He use a rod. He, his, his rod, la, the rod that he used. La. He go and... <laughs> By that, he, he missed the chance. He missed it. He missed it. He got no chance to enter into the promised land. See, that one mistake, that costly mistake, so leader, there's a stricter judgment on leaders. You have to, no matter how, hold your horses, hold your anger, hold your fleshy desires. Yeah, I know it's difficult. That's why the Bible asks us to walk by, walk in the Spirit or not. Walk, walk by the Holy Spirit, not walk by flesh. You have to every time remind yourself, God help me, I'm weak. To be very honest and frank with God. God help me by your strength. No. So don't react to, to people. Don't react to situations. You will miss it. Yeah, Moses just missed it like that. <laughs> he didn't enter into promised land. So Christian, right? The leader. Miss it. Joshua is the one. <laughs> Better leader, alright? So he followed. Okay, uh, next. Jesus and his father, Jesus, of course, he said, I only do what my father tell me to do. Good follower. No? I only speak what my father asked me to speak. Wow, that kind of obedience. No? You, Jesus, no? you're talking about Jesus, the one you worship every Sunday. <laughs> the one you're following. He said, I will not do anything if I don't see my father do. I only do what my father do. I only do my father business. See, Jesus is the best example how he has set before us uh, to follow. He's a good follower. He understands the hearts of his father. He, he, he really knows what the father wants. So that's why God can say, well, this is my son, the man I'm well pleased. Right? Okay, uh, go on. Timothy and Apostle Paul. Yeah? Timothy have a... Uh, actually, he's a very, very uh, young pastor. Uh, we take care of the church in Ephesus, I think. Uh, actually, he be because he's young. Um, not that he's not gifted. He's actually rose in three generations of Christian family: his grandmother, his mother, Christians. Uh, so he have a very good lineage of spiritual uh, heritage, actually. But he's still very timid and fearful. Huh? He's very timid and very weak, physically also weak. Uh, that's why Paul had to encourage him. Paul had to encourage him. For you do not receive the spirit of fear. Paul says uh, in 2 Timothy 1, uh, 1 7, you do not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So Paul had to encourage him to be a stronger leader. And Paul write uh, uh, two letters to him 
to to teach him to to teach him how to be strong, how to be uh, not timid, uh, 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 stand firm in the faith of God, and and really face the challenges, uh, wrong teaching, the the, uh, the wrong teaching that that being difficult people that challenge his faith in the church. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 Timothy. So until Paul also regard him as the spiritual son, right? He always started first Timothy and second Timothy say, "This is my spiritual son." Okay, this is my son actually, uh, spiritually birth, which is uh, very dear to Paul. Uh, very dear to Paul. Okay, leaders are example to the follower. So we are to set example. We got no choice. We have to set example. Because our, our lives speak louder than anything, anything. Okay, let's let's uh, turn to John 13. Is it John 13? John 13. Okay, I made a mistake there. Okay, right. Uh, read, I read to you from uh, New King James. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am, is what Jesus said. Huh? If then, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So Jesus, before he go off, he, 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 he did an action that shocked his disciples. Huh? He, he, he go and uh, go to the kitchen there, take a towel and uh, some warm water, and then he kneel down before the disciples and ask them to sit down one by one and wash their feet. It's, it's amazingly humble work because their feet not like our feet, no. They are staying in places like desert places. They don't wear shoes like a uh, nice shoe like uh, Raymond Crocodile shoe, la, what, la, you know? Adidas, la, they don't have. <laughs> They wear uh, uh, sandal, yeah, sandal. So a lot of dust, a lot of sand, very smelly lake, you know, I don't know. So it's a humble job. They own, normally they wash their own feet. They don't let other people wash their feet. I don't think so they let other people wash their feet, unless you're the mother. Lah, huh? <laughs> you wash their feet. So when Jesus did this, they cannot take it. They cannot take it. I still remember we did this in China as well. In 2018, we went to this church. Uh, uh, at the end of the service, uh, uh, my partner, Pastor Tedious, he have a urge from God telling us, um, say, God wants us to do this to you before we leave. So before, before we leave, that's the last service already. So God, uh, so he said, uh, some of you in the kitchen, can you please boil some hot water <laughs> and get some towels? So we ask all, uh, all the most of them are elderly people. Most of them, I think, not, not even one of them are younger than us. We are the younger, actually. <laughs> we are the younger. They're all older than us. So we started from the oldest men. One by one, wash their feet. Very smelly. Really very smelly. I don't know how long they didn't even wash their feet. <laughs> they didn't bathe also because winter they don't bathe. So we just wash, wash until the water becomes dark color, oh my goodness, gray color already. But when we wash, huh, no music, nobody singing. But uh, you can feel the atmosphere suddenly change. This old man uh, started crying. When he cried, then you also say, we have shown you what God asks us to do, to serve one another with humility. Right? This is just a uh, symbolic we, we are going after this 
but you all have to take on from here to serve each other. No? Serve each other. So there are forgiveness happening in that midst. I don't know that I can sense that there are some people have misunderstanding, they cry and hug each other and say sorry, be behind. Then they start washing each other's feet. Just like that. Everybody hug each other, cry, wash their feet. Just like that happen. Just like that. We just show the first example, that's all. We wash the old man's feet. Uh, Raymond's feet, huh? You need to be washed, is it? <laughs> <laughs> So amazing, amazing. But we, uh, we realize that when we obey God, uh, we obey God's voice, uh, powerful things happen. Uh, powerful. I never, I never have that experience until that day. How powerful is by setting an example. Just willing to wash a dirty feet. Their feet is definitely more dirty and more smelly than yours. Uh. Uh, they are farmers, you know. Day in, day out, uh, go to farm and come back. And they don't, they don't bathe during winter. They don't bathe. Very cold. <laughs> so very dirty. Very dirty, the water. But the action of uh, serving and the uh, principle of serving with uh, humility is, is planted. Uh, is planted. Definitely planted. <laughs> very powerful. Very powerful. Any questions? <laughs> okay, I think I stop here, lah. Stop here, cause uh, too too much thing to to go on. Yeah, I I would like to open up for questions, or else we go to sleep already. <laughs> Any questions? I tackle your questions. What you understand about salvation? Salvation comes from the word save, right? I'm safe. But are you safe? Yes, safe, really safe yes. <laughs> in the future? No, what? you're not in heaven yet. What? Okay, can you repeat the question again? Repeat the question again. Yeah. I still need. Uh, clear mm. explanation on the work out your salvation. Okay, right. Let, let's go back to the word uh, where this scripture come from. Uh, Philippians 2. Okay, let's go back to Philippians 2. Uh, verse 12 and 13, right? Okay, let me read to you again. Philippians 2, 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have already obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. All right? Work out your own salvation. That's a, another word, own. Eh? That means individually. You have your own life to work out. You have your own personal life need to, need to be developed towards the image of God. As I told you just now, I, I, I've spent quite a lot of time talking about justification. You need to be sanctified, need to be justified. Our faith needs to grow in the Lord. Correct? Our character needs to be built Right? Our sins need to be washed. 
our fleshly desire need to be die daily. God say, let your fleshly desire be dead and walk in faith and walk in spirit, right? So all these are the process of working out our salvation towards the image and likeness of God. Day by day, we become more and more like Jesus. All right? Our life will be purified, sanctified, and become pure, as holy as Him. So it's a process of work out. Yeah? So how God going to know you are already woke up. God going to send certain circumstances to test you, whether you pass your test or not. Mm. 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 Whether God hear you or not. Okay. What do you mean uh, when you pray, God, did God hear your prayer? You mean? There's two parts in it. One part is maybe your own doubt. Another part is the accusations of the evil one. Because uh, that's his job, uh, you can't blame him. <laughs> because the Bible says he's the accuser of our brother. Uh. His job is to accuse us of, uh, uh, condemn us of the past sin that we have committed, uh, make you feel condemned, make you feel you're unworthy even though you are worthy make you feel you are sinful even though you are not that bad, not that sinful. So he will make you feel as lousy as he can. All right? That is his job. But the Bible says, there's, therefore there's no more condemnation for those who in Christ Jesus, for those who in, in Christ Jesus. So the key is, if you, if you make sure you are in Christ, yeah, you, you, will be sh you will be assured of you will not have this condemnation. You will not allow. Yeah? Mm. You, have, you can reject it because we are cleansed. You say, uh, you, you say, now the Bible has told me when the Bible says when we confess our sin, all right, he is just and he will forgive our sins, right? So, doubt will come at times. No, uh, that, that's sure. Uh, that's our human weakness. But you will not like to entertain it. Because the more you entertain doubt, then you will not have room for faith. Because your heart already occupies so much of doubt. So imagine your heart is like an empty room. The, the doubt is already filled up your, your, your heart, full of doubts. Just like Thomas, huh? the disciple Thomas. Huh? <laughs> That's a, that, uh, that is a perfect example of many of us. Thomas, uh, he's so doubtful, huh? he didn't even believe God rose up from the dead, huh? remember? Even though Jesus had told them so many times, I will die. Then three days after that, I will rose up from the dead. He even used the temple of God. Huh? Oh, this temple, uh, I can ruin, uh, let it collapse. Three days, I build it again. Actually, what he's talking about is himself. He will die. Then three days, he rose again. That is what he said. Okay? He had many times have tell all his disciples. But yet, Thomas don't believe it. He was so doubtful that unless I put my finger into your scar hand, unless I put my finger into 
your ribs, the pierce of the uh, sword. Uh, I will not believe. He said. So truly, he go and touch. God allowed him. God accept him. Allow him to come to him. Don't you think that God allowed you to also come to him? Even though you also doubtful like Thomas, I also many times have doubt. Many, many times. But take comfort that there are somebody may be worse than you like Thomas. <laughs> huh? He's so bad, huh? God still accept him. God said, hey, come, take your hand, come. Don't be afraid. Put your hand here so that you believe. I'm the one who have lived with you for three years. I'm the one who eat with you for three years. I'm the one who have prayed with you for three years. I'm the one who died on the cross for you. So Thomas had no other choice. Have to believe. This is his master, Jesus Christ. At the end, Thomas, the historian told us that he had so much favor after he had touched Jesus. There no doubt anymore he had taken the gospel to India. And so many churches have built in India. The Toma, uh, Matoma Church, uh, uh, to believe that they are built by him. Today, Matoma Church in Malaysia also have there's so many believers have believed Jesus because of Thomas, a great, great disciple of God. Used to be so doubtful, yet God still uses him. Amazing, right? Amazing. Amazing. God can turn a doubtful person to become so powerful and faithful. So powerful. Yeah? So God can, God can turn you around. Yeah, sister? God bless you, huh? To have faith in God, yeah? <laughs> okay, any more questions? If you don't have question, uh, uh, I may like to probably uh, test and see whether you have this question or not. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. Okay, out of seven of us here, uh, five of you are ladies, right? Five of you are ladies, only two men. <laughs> okay, I'm me. Okay. Uh, you, you, I don't know, you, you may have these questions. Uh, God may use probably the man to do big things for God. Huh? I'm, I'm just a lady. Uh, what, what can I do for God? Have you ever thought about that? All the time. <laughs> All the time. What, what can I do? I have limitation. <laughs> Some more, I, I have family, I have children. Uh, my, my husband is not a Christian or... Some, some of you think like that, right? Maybe one, some of you are single, I don't know. Uh, yeah. mm. Mm. Oh. You keep comparing yourself to others when actually you are more special than the others. Mm. Yeah, and, and what I feel is the enemy knows that and he's trying to suppress all your gifts. But in fact, if you put me up on the stage, I cannot pray like you. You prayed, you prayed so well today. And wow. I can tell you something. I've been watching people pray. Mm. Your one was not a drama. The mm. way you kneel down, the way you put up your hands. Sometimes when you stand on stage, you look mm. at my expression, I get bored very fast. If it <laughs> looks, yes, honestly, I'm being transparent. If it looks like a performance, if it looks like drama, 
I will get bored. I'll be looking up, down. But yours, I paid attention. Mm. I truly paid attention. So, my my uh, advice to you, sister, mm. Mm. you pray that you discover your worth, mm. your value in God. Yes. Don't base it on what others are doing and how they react to you. Mm. If you keep doing that, you will stunt your growth. That's my my advice from from one sister to another. Mm. And I request that we just pause for a while and pray for her. Mm. She needs us now. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Uh, can I just share a little bit? to oh. Just to give uh, Sister Christine encourage. Okay. Actually, last time, I, I also same like you. You know, I'm not a pure Malaysia, you know. I came from Indonesia. Okay, you know how God... Uh, uh, give me a confidence, Sister Christine. That's why I always rely on God. I say, God, I'm a children of you. I'm your favor. Even though I, I can't speak really properly, but when I dwell in the presence of God, it's not me, I know. Even until now, also people say that I speak also not so very good, but it's okay. And I also, I was like you last time, like to compare. Why? Uh, how come, uh, my uh, uh, friends, uh, they can pray so hard, so good. How come my family, my sister, all my uncle, they all pastor? How come I'm not, you know? I'm out from my family, you know. I want to be like them. But I, I couldn't be. But I also never, uh, you know, share with, uh, much from, from other friends. I just kneel down. Even though I face a lot of problems, Sister Christine, I need them. I used to, you know, dwell in the presence of God, and I don't care whatever people say. People want to ignore me or what? I just don't care. I keep pray, pray, so I I can stay today, stay in front of you, talk to you because of grace. That's why we need to uh, go by faith, as Pastor Pastor Ezekiel says. Pastor Ezekiel really, I really learned a lot of things from him. He's, to be honest, ah. Uh, my favorite pastor. <laughs> because like, a lot of things I learned from him. He's a really very humble. And I also thank my sister. She's in inspired me. And him. This is how I humble. I was a very bright people last time. But after I, I divorced with my ex, this is how God really grew on me. I learned from the beginning till now. This is what I am. I can I come back to God to serve Him. I humble myself. I on the sh stage after uh, eight years, it is because of God. Because why? I willing to come back. I really, really willing to come back. Obey to God, and don't care whatever people say. That's it. Just you know, you want to build a re relationship with God more deep. Bible, read the Bible, read the Scripture every day. Okay, don't worry. Okay, we are stand for you here. Christine, your name, eh? Father, I thank you for Christine, such a wonderful woman of God that you have chosen. You have predestined, you have prepared her to be great in your sight. Lord, I thank you for her life. I speak your blessing upon her right now in the name of Jesus. I speak faith, I speak boldness, I speak confidence into her spirit right now in the name of Jesus. For your word has said there's no more condemnation for those who in Christ Jesus. Lord, that she have accept Jesus as her personal Savior. You accept Jesus as her Master and Lord. Lord, now the Lord of her life is Jesus. There's no other than Jesus, Lord. No doubt that she belongs to you and she is yours, Lord. Fill her heart with your spirit. Fill her heart with faith that know and know that she belongs to you and know that know for sure that she will be great in your sight of father because you have made her great and make her wonderful and make her unique and special in your own eyes lord i pray lord that that she will she will express herself in a way that's so pleasing to you and you have caused her to 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 be so free and so comfortable uh, to, to move around in, in, in the church and in the, in the circles of friends that will walk around because you are with her and her confidence comes from you. Lord, I speak that confidence in her right now in the name of Jesus. Let her know 
who she belongs to and let her know who she is uh, 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 in the family of the kingdom of God, then she will be so confident and she should speak confidently and walk confidently in the midst of the rest of the people. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that she continue to grow, grow in strength, grow in faith, grow in favor of God and in the favor of man. Lord, I pray, Lord, that she continue to not only grow in that, and grow in the knowledge of God, grow in, in, in confidence, and grow in, in knowledge of God, and grow in walk with God, and she's become so pleasing to you, Lord Father. I speak that into her in the name of Jesus, most powerful name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay? Right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Great, great, great. Yeah. The body of Christ, huh? we minister to each other. Okay, just in case you be wondering, uh, I'm just a woman. I, uh, I'm nobody. How? What can I do? Uh, yeah, there's uh, some examples here. Uh, the last one, huh? The last one, Rehab. You know Rehab? Rehab is uh, uh, was a prostitute, uh, was a prostitute in the Old Testament. But Rehab, the name Rehab is mentioned in the list of all the faithful men in chapter 11 Hebrew. All the faithful men who have lived a legacy of faith that have pleased God. Rehab's name is in that list, you know. Wow. <laughs> Furthermore, Rahab is not an Israelite. He is not the chosen people of God. No. He is a pagan. Uh, she, she is a pagan. No. She is so called a Gentile. But Rahab's name is mentioned there. A prostitute who despised by the society. Nobody like to be friend with prostitute. Nobody really like to be neighbor of a prostitute. <laughs> but this Rahab, because he heard of the name of a God who saved their own people, he must have read a portion of the Pentateuch. You know what's Pentateuch? The five books of Moses, the first five books, right? Uh, which Moses wrote, written, uh, Genesis, Exodus, uh, all these numbers. Leviticus. So he must have heard of Jehovah, the God who has saved their own people out of Egypt into the promised land. So he believed in that God. At the end, he did one action that seems to be not so right morally, but that action has pleased God that make his name part of the list of the faithful man of God in the Bible. So Rahab, because he, he hidden two spies, but remember, in his house, then the Jericho people was looking for, for them. So the, he, his heart of want to protect God's people, please God, yeah, that, that action. Yes, he lied. He said, hey, they, they, they go the other way. <laughs> He lied, but he, she have done something that, uh, for the sake of her faith. Actually, what please God actually her faith? Yeah, she knows that this these people one day going to come and conquer their land. And he asked these two spies, "When you come, please save us. Please, please save my family." So the two spies said, "When I come, I need to see a sign in your house so that we won't kill you." So you tie a red string. You, you read the story, you go to back and read. Huh? The red string symbolizes red is blood color. That red is symbolized your, uh, at the end, it, it symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Huh? That they saw this house is protect and this house trust in the blood of Jesus. So they saw this, then they come, then they spare the family lives. That's how Rehab 
<laughs> become famous until today we still remember him because his name is listed there. And another fact of Rahab, you know who is Rahab? Uh? Rahab is Boaz's mother. And who is Boaz? Ruth's husband. Who is Ruth? Who is, who is Boaz? Boaz married to Ruth, right? Uh, sorry, uh, not Ruth, <laughs> the H there. Uh. Boaz actually is King David's great grandmother. Great grandmother. And who is King David? King David actually. Jesus is the son of David, isn't it? So at the end, Jesus' lineage comes from King David. And Rahab is his great, 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 great grandmother. My goodness. A saviour of us uh, have a lineage of Rahab. Eh? Wow, wonderful, right? See how God can use a woman, such a woman that despised by society, but God can use him, her. So don't despise yourself. Don't look down on yourself. God can use you as long as you're willing to trust Him, to surrender your life to Him and follow Him all the, all your, the, the days of your life. God can make you great. God can make you great. Your children's children, children, next, next generation will remember you for it. Right? Just an example. Huh? Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay, if no questions, then we can close. Shall we? We can close in a... You, you know the song, Give Thanks? Give Thanks, we shall sing the song, shall we? Uh, let's stand. Maybe stand up and... Uh, give thanks to God and uh, we just surrender ourselves to God. And allow God to use us in any leadership position or prepare us for leadership in the future. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. For us, and now let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Let's pray in our own way to God, in our own, and give thanks really today what He has taught us for the life that He has given to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give thanks, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for chosenness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. 
even though we are so insignificant, insignificant to, to many, Lord, but yet you choose us to be a follower of you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that one day you may train us, prepare us to be in some leadership positions. Lord, we, 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 we give thanks in advance. We thank you for that privilege. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will know how to be a good leader. We will know how to uh, lead people and be a good example and lead them to you and lead them to follow you at the same time. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we walk this life with faith and with obedience, Lord, we will learn from you, Jesus. We will learn from the great man of God in the history of mankind in the Bible that we were able to keep up a good faith, keep up a, a, a faithful life, oh Lord, towards you, an obedient life, a life that pleasing to you, that we will bring people to you and worship you, oh Father. I pray, Lord, our life will be a worship, uh, our life will be example, our life will be a shining star for you, that, that, that people uh, uh, look at our life, they'll see you, uh, look, look at our life and look at our ways of life, they will see uh, uh, the, the life of Jesus in us, oh Father. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will be increased in our life and we will decrease uh, daily, O oh Father, and we will sing of your grace and your mercies forever. Lord, we thank you. As we go from here, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will go with us and you will fill our hearts with joy and fill our hearts with songs and praise, O oh Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see. Thank you, thank you.